you know that if you have something like 15 over 65, you would need to simplify that. And even if you don't think about it anymore, what you're really doing is saying 15 is 3 times 5, and 65 is 13 times 5, crossing out the 5, and you're left with 3 over 13. Right? Because you're taking out the common factor and you're just leaving what's left. This is the same thing for more complicated expressions. For example, something like x squared minus 2x minus 15 over x squared minus 9. You have to break it apart into its factors and then cross out the ones that they have in common and that will be simplified. So on the top we have to factor that out, x squared minus 2x minus 15. That's x plus 3 and x minus 5. That'll give us a negative 15 and negative 2x. Okay, that's correct. And on the bottom, x squared minus 9, that's the difference of squares. We have x plus 3 and x minus 3. Now, just like we did on the top, we're going to cross out what's the same. So x plus 3 and x plus 3 cancel out. And our answer is x minus 5 over x minus 3. That's the simplified form. The same principle is true when you're multiplying these expressions together. You want to factor them first, then multiply them together. Then you want to simplify. So let's go ahead and factor these. You know, 3x minus 3x squared over x squared plus 4x minus 5 times this expression over here. I'm just going to put an equal sign and factor. So 3x minus 3x squared, it's going to be, we can take out a 3x, and we're left with 1, because 3x times 1 is 3x, minus x. On the bottom, we have x squared plus 4x minus 5. We've got to factor that into two expressions. That's x plus 5 and x minus 1. Minus 1. And we're just going to leave the time sign. On the top, x squared plus x minus 20. That's two expressions. We have x plus 5 and x minus 4. And on the bottom, we're left with 3x, so we just put 3x. Okay. Now we're just going to multiply those together. I'm going to bring this over here to save some space. So we're going to multiply the tops together. So we just, when we multiply that together, we just kind of um, put it all together. We, there, there's not much multiplying going on. We're just kind of sticking it all together. So we have 3x times 1 minus x times x plus 5 times x minus 4. On the bottom, we have x plus 5 times x minus 1 and 3x. So at this point, we're just looking for things we can cancel out. x plus 5 is on the top and the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel those out. Um, 3x is on the top and the bottom. I'm going to cancel those out. Um, so now we're left with 1 minus x, x minus 4 on the top and x minus 1 on the bottom. Um, in most situations, you won't have to do this, but this is a special one. This is why I'm showing it to you. So 1 minus x and x minus 1 are very similar. They're just flipped. So if we want to change 1 minus x to x minus 1, all we need to do is take out a negative 1. Then it actually changes to x minus 1. In most situations, you won't have to do this. But in this one, it's a special situation. Because think about it. If you multiply a one, negative 1 into this, then you have positive 1 minus x, and that's the same. The reason I did this is because now that I made them the same, just because they were flipped, I can go ahead and cross them out. And I'm left with negative 1 times x minus 4. And I'm going to get negative x plus 4, which is the answer in the simplified form of these two expressions being multiplied together. My next example of multiplication is this. This one's slightly different because you don't, there's not really much you can factor out. Like in the other example, it was clear that you could factor the top and the bottom before multiplying it together. This one, there's not much factoring that you can do, right? 8x cubed y, you, what are you going to take out of that? It's just one expression. 
Same with everything here. So in this type of problem, you're just going to multiply everything together right away, and then you're just going to simplify. So you have 56. Remember, multiply the tops and the bottoms. That's how you multiply fractions, just the numerators together and just the denominators together. So 56, x to the seventh. When you multiply exponents together, you add them. So 56, x to the seventh. y to the fourth. 1 plus 3 is 4. On the bottom, we have 2 times 4 is 8. x, there's no x on the other side. And y squared times y to the first, that's y cubed. At this point, you're just going to apply the rules for dividing exponents. So 56 divided by 8 is just going to give us 7. x to the seventh over x. So I'm going to put the fraction bar. Actually, I'm going to put the fraction bar here first. Um, maybe we won't need it. But it's just helpful to remember that you can put things on the top or the bottom. So 56 over 8 is 7, and that goes on the top. Um, x to the 7th on the top, x on the bottom. We're going to be left with x to the 6th on the top, because 7 minus 1 is 6, and that's positive. It's going to be on the top. And then y to the 4th over y cubed. We're going to be left with 1y on the top, y to the 1st. And in this situation, there's actually no denominator anymore. Everything happened to be in the numerator. But in some situations, of course, like maybe if there's more y's in the bottom than on the top, then you're going to be left with some y's in the denominator. But this is just going to be your answer. 7x to the 6th, y. Another quick, another quick example of multiplication. In this situation, you have a fraction times not a fraction. When this happens, you need to know that that means that it's actually this over 1. Because you multiply the tops together, it's x plus 2 times this top, and x cubed minus 27 times that denominator. So you can't actually factor this top. So what we're going to be left with is x plus 2 times x squared plus 3x plus 9. On the bottom, x cubed minus 27, when you first look at that, you're probably not going to know that you can factor it. But if you remember, it's x cubed minus 27 that is the difference of cubes, which we've talked about a ton, difference of cubes. And the equation for that is a minus b times a squared plus b, a b minus b squared. So let's go ahead and plug it into this, to the difference of cubes equation. So we have a minus b, x minus 3, a is x, b is 3. Then we have a squared, x squared, minus ab, or plus ab, plus 3x, plus b squared, plus 9. In this situation, we can cancel this and this, and we're left with x plus 2 over x minus 3. Now, if you can't remember the sum and difference of cubes equation, that's fine. Um, you can look that back up, and I'll write it here for you as well. All right, I just pasted it here for you, sum of cubes equation and difference of cubes equation. That's probably something you want to write into your composition notebook or notebook for this section. Remember, sum of difference in cubes, that's used to factor when you have a sum or difference of cubes equation. All right, sorry this video is going kind of long. I'm going to cut myself off here in a second. There's just one more thing we have to talk about, and that's dividing expressions like this. And all you need to know for this is it's exactly the same as multiplying, but when you see division, you need to flip this one around. You flip this one around, and then it's exactly the same as multiplying. So 7x over 2x minus 10 times x squared minus 11x plus 30 over x squared minus 6x. Now you're going to factor where you can, so you'll factor this, factor this, then you'll multiply them together, and I'm going to skip some steps here, but you have 7x times x minus 5, x minus 6, over 2 times x minus 5, that's the factor of this, 2 times x minus 5, you have to factor everything. And then the factor of that, this second one, is x times x minus 6. Cancel, 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 cancel. 
and you're left with 7x over 2x, cancel, 7 over 2. I know I worked that one really fast, I just want to make sure you know the only difference for division is you flip it, then you factor stuff, you do exactly like multiplication after you flip that first part.